We're about to enter a fourth user experience. I'm Robert Scoble. And uh, if you're sitting next to an empty seat, can you hold up your hand? Because there's standing room in the back and there's a lot of people trying to get in. Come on up if you're in the back. So if you don't know who I am, I go around the world and interview tech executives about new things that are coming up. I visit R&D labs and uh, interview a lot of startups around the world. And I'm uh, giving you insight into what I'm seeing coming next in this speech. We're about to enter the fourth user experience, user interface. The first one was character mode DOS. The second one was GUIs with the Macintosh. The third one was touch with the uh, iPhone and Android and tablets. And at each one of these changes, um, we've seen companies go away. And we've seen unicorns form, billion dollar companies. Um, today I'm located at Upload VR, a new media site that's covering the virtual reality space. And I'm um, seeing a new world coming thanks to guys like this. This is Mayron, who runs a company called Meta. And he's competing with a company called Magic Leap. Magic Leap has gotten $1.3 billion of investment and has no product and has no customers. So think about that one. He's also competing with Microsoft HoloLens. And I know of 11 glasses under development at companies like Facebook and Amazon and, and Apple that are uh, going to compete with this guy's glasses. We're building a new user interface, one that you don't use your fingers or a mouse to interact with, but one that I interacts with the world as we walk around. And let's get a, a little look at some of the primitives of this new user interface. I mean, if I was giving this talk and Microsoft Windows was just being announced, we would talk about mouse move messages and the API and how that system works. But today we're getting uh, devices, whether they're drones, they're robots, they're self-driving cars, or these new mixed reality glasses that are coming, like the Microsoft Hol HoloLens, that are going to have sensors. And they're going to map out the world uh, as you look around, as you walk around in the world. And the, the glasses, like the Magic Leap glasses, are going to map this world out with these sensors. And this is the Google Tango sensor video that you're seeing. And they're going to be able to overlay or mix reality uh, on top of the real world. They're going to be able to put virtual items on top of the real world. To do this, it's an amazing computer science. Because you have to, like on the HoloLens, there's four cameras that are being joined together. And then it has to know that's a desk, and this is a floor, and that's a chair. Because it needs to know what those items are so that it can properly overlay things on top of them. So as you walk around the world with these sensors on, it's going to be mapping our, us. It's going to be mapping the world as we move through this space. And we're going to be able to do uh, all sorts of new um, uh, applications because we're going to be able to see how big a room is just by looking around that fast, right? And you're seeing some of the demos of what uh, Tango can do. And this video is already a year old. So that gives you a sense of how fast this market is about to move. Uh, Google in a couple weeks is going to announce uh, Tango with uh, a Chinese uh, phone company. And you're going to be able to use the phone with these sensors on it to map out the world and put, start putting uh, virtual items on top of it. I wanted you to see the primitives uh, uh, of what the computer scientists are building so that you understand what is about to come in the next three years with these uh, um, mixed reality glasses and, and technologies. The um, ability to know exactly where you are just by wear, wearing something or holding some sensors up is really, really compelling. And it's going to let us do things like these blue arrows on the floor, uh, which are overlaid on top of the real world. Developers are going to have a lot of fun with this. But 
like in previous user interface changes, there's going to be winners and losers. When we went to uh, Macintosh and Windows, there were two companies that bet on DOS, Borland and WordPerfect. They are gone today because they made that decision. When we went to touch computing, um, two companies bet on the old world, Nokia and Blackberry, and they're pretty uh, gone or irrelevant today. Tomorrow, you're going to be uh, putting on glasses like this, like you already are if you work at Caterpillar, and you're going to augment the world. You're going to see uh, how to fix a new tractor, how to uh, do things like change a jet engine at Boeing, and it's going to overlay virtual images on top of the real world. This is already happening inside our enterprises. Uh, I visited with oil refinery people who are building these glasses. Uh, Disney designed its new theme park in virtual reality that's opening in China. Ford is using virtual reality to design its new cars, and they told me it's a lot cheaper to design a car in virtual reality than it is um, to build a clay model. So right now you're looking through the Magic Leap glass and you notice it's putting user interface items on top of the real world and they're stuck to the table. They, are, uh, they fool your mind into thinking they're reality. They're mixing reality, virtual items on top of things and it's uh, hard to tell sometimes the difference with these. I believe they're also going to augment your hearing. At Coachella, a big music festival, I have these new um, hearing buds from, uh, active, uh, from Hear Active Listening, and they augment the sound in the room. I, already, I, if I'm in a car, I can push a button on my iPhone, and it changes how I hear the world. When I was at the Co Coachella, I could hear music in new ways through these uh, earbuds. So think of a system that has new optics that show you virtual items on top of the real world. Think about a system that has always on really high speed internet. Uh, an executive at Google X told me that in five years the phone company is dead. And if you think about w how that's going to happen, Google has more fiber around the world than any other company. And they ha are building things over our heads to bring us high speed wireless on loon uh, balloons and here in the modern world we're going to get uh, antennas that are really high speed and very low cost. We're also going to control this world in a new way. We're not going to use uh, controlling devices li like mice and pens anymore. We're going to use our bodies and our eyes. And. Um, Let's get a taste of what that looks like right now. So this guy created a company called iFluence. He's making eye sensors for this new world. And he gave me a little demo. Let's listen to him uh, talk about what he can do with his eyes. Here's another uh, um, a close-up of uh, uh, some electronics in our office. And I can go home when I want to. Over here is a medical application. and um, I'm All with your it. eyes. All with my eyes. So I'm doing this solely with my eyes as fast as I can look. I'm not waiting. I'm not winking. I'm just looking. And here I've got uh, uh, the patient. I've got some allergy record, pr protocols, insurance, confidential information, current conditions. Why is he here? Well, he tells me he's got a pain in his foot. Notice I'm looking at this, but there's nothing happening on the screen. But when I decide, for instance, that I want to check out his x-ray, there it is. And now I want to go back because a couple screens ago there was some confidential information, which is here. And um, now it's going to take a picture of my eye. It grabs it, says, oh, who is that? Confirms that it's me. And in a moment, you'll see that it'll give me access. I'm Jim, head of uh, CEO and founder of, of iFluence. And there it is. I've got confidential information. When I want to, I can return home as fast as that. That's amazing. All of my eyes. That's amazing. So he only let me film uh, one-eighth of his demo. The part he didn't let me film is he had me put on a separate piece of, uh, pair of glasses, and he had me look at items in my world and I pulled my iPhone out, put it on the table and looked at the iPhone. It went to Google image search, 
figured out that was an iPhone 6S Plus, all with my eyes, and then pulled up Amazon and let me buy another iPhone all with my eyes. So think about walking around the world and interacting with brands and people this way. You're going to look at things and be able to control the user interface and the world all with our eyes. And of course, we're still going to have our hands, Meta and HoloLens and, and Magic Leap, our building sensors that see our hands and let us do gestures to the user interface and click on things and punch things and uh, have lots of fun. These are what the sensors look like. So this is a real company. And uh, you're going to hear a lot more about them over the next uh, few years. You're already seeing uh, uh, this new spatial world evolve with products like Microsoft HoloLens. How many people have had HoloLens on their face? A couple. That's going to change over the next year because uh, uh, the devices are finally starting to come out. But keep in mind, these are uh, big devices. They're expensive devices. They're $3,000 today. What you're not seeing is what's happening in the R&D labs. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing such a consistent improvement every year in the size, in the sharpness, in the compute package, and the price coming down that we can pretty clearly see that within two to four years, we're going to see this kind of uh, product get really small and get to the place where it can start replacing our cell phones. So you think about wearing a glass that doesn't have a cell phone involved, and it's uh, quite exciting. It's going to let us do new kinds of education. Um, it's really mind-blowing, by the way, when you are in one of these glasses and you get to s play with virtual items in the real world. I mean, at, at Meta, it, it just absolutely blew me away because it was like being in Tony Stark's lab, and it's real. These videos are a little bit overhyped for the HoloLens product because the viewing angle on HoloLens is like having a 60-inch TV in front of you, a viewport into this virtual world. But that problem is only a few years away from being fixed, right? Meta has a, a bigger viewing angle, and, and Magic Leap does too. So come back to a little bit closer to today. When we are starting to play with, with virtual reality, we're starting to learn about this new spatial world. Here you're looking at the HTC Vive, which is my favorite virtual reality headset. And uh, the reason that Vive is interesting is because there's two sensors that you put on your wall, and it builds a 15 by 15 virtual box that you can walk around in. So it knows where your headset is, and it knows where your hands are in this space. And you can create things like, this is Google's Tilt Brush, a new application for painting in three dimensions. So you're now controlling the computer in space. And this is a dramatically new world. You can build things using these techniques that you just cannot build on your personal, on your uh, laptop or on your phone. At Facebook, when you visit the Oculus Rift's uh, headquarters, they take you into toy bots. And they put two controllers on your hands and you're put into Oculus Rift. And you can play ping pong with somebody else over the internet. You can shoot them. You can punch them. You can play trains with them. You can light fireworks. You can uh, uh, do all sorts of archery and, and other kinds of interactions. It's so compelling. I can see playing ping pong for a thousand hours. And if people say I'm lying, we played uh, pong on the Atari for a thousand hours when we were kids, and that was a stupid white dot going back and forth, right? You're going to play ping pong over the internet with me for many hours. And, and that's just one of these new social VR systems coming out. Philip Rosedale, who started Second Life, is building one called High Fidelity. Second Life is building a new one. And there's many new social VR systems coming along. When you start thinking about this new world, it lets us new, do new kinds of businesses. I was just at the Eiffel Tower uh, yep, two days ago, and there's a new VR business there 
And you're like, why would you want to wear a headset like this uh, uh, at the Eiffel Tower? Well, you go up in the Eiffel Tower, you see the real, the reality, and then you put on the headset and you can be transported into the Louvre and see what the Mona Lisa is without having to travel there. Or you can get a preview and, and it's quite compelling. And their customers are extremely happy. It's, they have lines of people waiting. But here we're in, in a lab in Seattle where this guy is building a new uh, real estate app. And he's selling condominiums using exactly virtual reality right. to redecorate your yeah, condo yeah, so he can take right. you up into your condo and say, oh, you don't like the way it looks? Let's change the carpet. Let's change the furniture. Let's change the colors on the walls. Does that make you happier? And then he, has a, he shot a drone video. So he took a drone up to the uh, elevation of the windows. And he can show you what your view will actually look like. And he can upsell you by taking you to the other side and saying, hey, if you pay $250,000 more for this condo, you get a better view, right? And he can uh, sell condos this new way. And you might say, well, that's only in uh, Silicon Valley. But no, this is uh, happening in Paris. There's a guy who's building a 360-degree uh, real estate site, right? And it's happening all over the world. We know that this is going to happen because the kids love it. But it's not just the kids. I have a, a really um, great office where I sit right next to four VR bays. And I am watching dozens of pe pe people get their first experience in virtual reality. And every single one smiles when they're using it or cries. Why cry? Because I've seen CEOs get into a, a refugee camp and it's so emotional to be in the camp that they're crying. This is a new powerful interface, one that's going to let us explore new kinds of journalism, new kinds of uh, education, and new kinds of uh, experiences. So um, in the five minutes I have left, by the way, you can take a picture of my Snapchat, too. <laughs> Where is this world going? And who's going to be disrupted? What is going to be uh, the experience when I put on the Magic Leap for the first time? What is it going to show me when I'm speaking or giving a presentation or talking in a boardroom or doing journalism or just walking around the world? What kinds of new experiences are you going to be able to build? It's going to be pretty mind-blowing. In terms of VR, um, you're seeing a lot of movement. You know, um, uh, Google just last week announced a, a, a new VR system that uses mobile phones. And this is going to bring VR to a lot of people, where the HTC Vive is about $2,000 to $3,000 because the Vive is uh, $800 for the headset and the controllers. And then you need a, a PC with a big NVIDIA card. The new NVIDIA cards that are coming out literally, what's today? The 20th? Yeah, the, the NVIDIA cards literally shipping today, the 1080p, uh, the 1080 uh, video cards, they're $600. The advantage of those high-end uh, headsets, whether it's Oculus Rift or Vive, is you have that NVIDIA card which can put a lot more polygons at your eyes. So the latency is better, the detail is better, and, it's, and, and that's why you need to be tethered today to a PC. A lot of people are like, why can't I use a Mac? The PC uh, gaming system has evolved to support these high-end NVIDIA cards at a m much better rate than uh, uh, the Macintosh. And so it's funny, I, I, haven't, you know, I haven't used a, a PC since I worked at Microsoft in 2006, and I'm being forced to buy a PC to, for this new world, which is really interesting. Um, but at the high end, you're gonna have these really immersive controlled environments with controllers and with uh, these virtual boxes. At the middle end, with the mobile phone, you're going to see a lot of innovation thanks to Google Tango. They're using the sensors on the phone to try to do similar things to the high-end controllers. So they're trying to figure out where in the world you are and uh, uh, how to interact with the world. The mobile phone, of course, is a lot more affordable. 
so you're going to see already you see a million of the Samsung Gear VR headsets sold. HTC has sold about 50,000 of their high-end headsets. By the way, the HTC is sold out. The NVIDIA card is sold out. The Oculus is sold out. I can't buy enough of these to do what I want in the world, building expo halls and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's a new world that's hard to get right now. That's going to change pretty quickly. Um, I have, I think, a couple minutes left, so if, if anybody has any questions, I'd love to take them. But it's a really uh, remarkable new world. Watch this company called Magic Leap. Watch what's happening in the bots world, too, because this world that you're going to wear or interact with is going to be controlled by your voice, by talking to bots. So a company that you should watch is Viv, V-I-V dot A-I. Siri, uh, for instance, has a problem. If you ask Siri uh, how many people are checked in here at, on Foursquare, it understands you just fine. Uh, and Foursquare has an answer, actually. It knows how many people are checked in at the next web on Foursquare. And Foursquare has an API. But Apple, uh, Siri, when you, when you say something to Siri, and this is true of all of them, uh, Alexa on the Amazon Echo, Cortana, uh, and the Google navigation system, it has to write 80 lines of code um, that, that take your noun, adjective, and verb and convert that to an API call. And it's hard-coded today. So if it, that code has not been written, and in Foursquare's case, it has not been written, it fails and gives you a stupid answer from Bing. And this is why these systems are so frustrating. But Viv writes the code as you search. So it's much more flexible. So the statements that you can give it are m much longer. And also, uh, Viv is open on the bottom end. And, and in fact, Apple just announced that Siri will be open. This is what they're talking about. They're going to make it possible to, for a developer like Foursquare to listen for anything that has to do with Foursquare and then write the rules that are going to affect the engine. Um, the problem is they're just not as flexible as Viv. So I think Viv is one to watch. Viv also builds a profile, so we should have a whole uh, hour on privacy here. And keep in mind this world is going to be a very strange world. Your eyes are going to be stu studied full time. If I'm studying your eyes, I know a lot about you. I know who you find attractive in this room, right? Because if you're looking around, your eyes are going to open up when you find somebody attractive. And it's going to be involuntary. Last time I was at, on stage here at Next Web, I was wearing a galvanic skin response sensor. And the guy who invented it was watching how nervous I was on his iPhone. It's freak, freaky. And then he started talking to me about the red light district, and it spiked up. <laughs> so think about, we're, I just was at a conference where they're building all sorts of brain interfaces, right? And today they're weird looking. But tomorrow, there are going to be a little chip set that you just put on your ear, maybe, and it listens to your brain. So now your eyes are being studied, your brain's being studied. It's a crazy, freaky world. And Viv is going to build a profile on everything you are doing with it, right? So we should have a whole discussion about what is privacy in the future. Um, and I think we need to redefine it to what is consequences. But we're heading into this new world, and I uh, really am honored to be here to present a little taste of what's coming in the next five years. The next five years are going to be really crazy. So thank you very much.